Hi again everyone, this is Scott, and in this video I'm going to be walking through Activity 6-4, Creating Objects in Active Directory, and Activity 6-5, Using DS Add to Create Objects. Um, these are both from the MCSA Guide to Installing and Configuring Microsoft Windows Server 2012 R2. Um, in my edition of the book, these activities begin at 234. So in the last video, we installed and configured our Active Directory domain services. Um, we opened up the management tool, or the little console, for Active Directory. And so now we're going to get into a little bit of creating um, objects. So first thing we're going to do is gonna, we're going to create an organizational unit, or an OU. We do that by right-clicking on the domain server here and selecting New Organizational Unit. Um, the first thing I usually do is I uncheck this box. It does help protect things from being deleted, but if you ever want to delete it, it makes it a little bit more difficult to remove something that you no longer use. I'm going to call this test OU1. And now I have my organizational unit. Inside of this, I'm going to create a new user. And this is going to be test user1. And this will allow this test user to log in to any computer that's on this domain. Um, the book tells you to go through and create a weak password. I think it's like my password, something like that. Um, understand that that won't work by default because it's not a secure enough password. I'm going to cut to the chase and just give it a secure password. and remove the requirement to change the password. Um, since this is a test environment, I'm going to set that password to never expire. In a real environment, for security purposes, you may want to have your passwords expire regularly, so your users have to create new passwords um, every 30 or 90 days, something like that. Um, I want to make sure the account is not disabled. If you disable it, then that user can't log into that account. So I want this to be a fully operational account, and I'll create it there. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a group in the same OU, and call it Test Group 1. Um, the book doesn't explain these. Um, the group scope should be set, at least for now, as global security, as the group type as security. The scope references um, how different domains in the same forest um, interact with each other, um, how far those interactions can extend. So um, hopefully I'll get into a little bit more in depth on these in a future video, um, and the same with the group types. For now we'll just leave them as the default and create the group as is. Um, the next thing we want to do is we're going to go ahead and add test user 1 to test group 1. So we're going to select the test user and go to his properties, and we're going to select member of. We're going to add, and by default, it first searches through groups or built-in security principles. Groups is what we're looking for, so I'm just going to type test and have it check names. It'll go and find the group. Um, if I had other groups, test group 2, test group 3, it would instead give me a list to select from. So let's take a look if, at doing it that way. If I had another group, test user, or test group 2, and I went to test user and went to add him to test group 1. So it'll go through and find anything that meets the criteria of starting with test. So we select test group 1 and hit OK to add test user to test group then we can verify that by opening the test group and viewing its members. Um, so these are kind of stackable. Um, a group can also be a member of another group. And that ties into... our scope. How far they can stack into each other um, across a domain or a forest. Um, I don't need group 2, so I'm going to remove it. And I think for the most part, that covers 
activity 6-4 um, using the GUI to create a user and a group and connect the two. Um, the next activity 6-5 is using DS add which is going to be done through command prompt so let's go ahead and open a command prompt and so this is a fairly lengthy command that we're going to use it can actually be even longer and more complex it entirely depends on um, how much you want to set up through here as opposed to using the GUI for 2012 I'm going to go verbatim for what the book has and we may see an error We'll take a look and see what happens. Maybe I should finish that command, right? didn't work. Let's try that again. I accidentally hit my tab key and it interrupted the command. So just a quick look back over this whole command. Uh, I'm saying in my domain services I want to add a user. The container name is supposed to be test user2 and the organizational unit of test OU1 underneath the domain controller 410 server 2012 domain controller or dot local. So the full domain there. Um, this UPN I'm not going to get into right now. The SAM ID is just like the username or the ID, test user2. Um, first name is test, last name user2, password, password1. Um, I want to make this user a member of this group, test group1, which is in the OU, test OU1. So there's the group specifically. Um, so let's see. And there we go. So we've created that user, and if we come back into our GUI, we can hit F5 to refresh and see that the user was created. Um, I have seen this happen before when there's a space in the container name. I don't see it often and it didn't occur this time. But occasionally you may get an error that it doesn't recognize the OU or some such nonsense. Um, if that does happen, I've noticed that moving these quotes inside here help it to recognize that the container name has a space in it I'm not 100% certain what causes that error or why this fixes it I don't use the command line side to create um, containers in Active Directory often enough to give any real tips or advice about that so take that for what it's worth if you get that error try this and it might fix it um, Otherwise, you have created your user. Um, and we can come in and take a look at the properties. And so we have the first name test, last name user2. And if we look at our memberships, we are a part or a member of test group1. So there's a, a fairly short and quick way to create um, users using the command line. And again, that command can become quite a bit more complex. Um, let's verify. 
So there's a logon name, test user 2 at 410 server 2012, which is our domain, our local domain here. That ties a little bit into the UPN. Um, we don't have any of these checked. I'm going to go ahead and mark password never expires. And you can do that with the command line. I just find the GUI a little bit easier to use, a little bit quicker. Um, so we verify that that user has been created. He's been created in the correct OU. He's been created with the correct group membership. Um, so I think that pretty much covers um, activity 6-5. Um, as always, if you have any questions, comments, please feel free to leave them for me below, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.